Hey, welcome back. I have two sheds with the possibility of creating a tiny home. The one is more developed than the other one that I already put a video up about. So I want to talk a little bit about this one, which is, I think, absolutely adorable. How far I got, the process, and everything I did to it. This particular shed I had custom made and changed a few things and it. It had uh, some an additional door and it had uh, some uh, other things in it that I eliminated. And when you go and get a custom one, you're going to pay a little bit more, but you kind of get what you want to get. And had I done this over again, I would have changed a few things, which I'll go into later in this video. One of the things that came with the shed was this vapor barrier that was put on the plywood or the, the sheeting that goes on the walls and on the ceiling. It's called a vapor barrier. That was put on there before it was even created. I, I think, I don't know if it's a, a sheet film that they put on there or if, a, if it's a spray, but it is a vapor barrier and it makes it resistant to sweating, which is really important when you're heating something. So that's a good quality. If you're going to get one, make sure you get that. The second thing that I ordered when I had this shed custom made was um, the height of the ceiling. I think I got like 7.3 or 7 feet 3 inches, which allowed me to put an 80 inch door in the, um, in the shed so I could use a regular door. By the way, that's critical when you're thinking about getting a shed. They normally come with these two wide open doors. Well, that's pretty useless. First of all, they're not good for insulation. You can't really get efficient insulation in there. The, the two by fours are tipped sideways, so the insulation is terrible. So you will have to either order it without that there and with a real door, or you will have to remove the doors yourself and use the sheathing and fill it in and I don't even know how that would look so you got to consider that probably best off to just buy a regular door if your intention is tiny home buy a regular door 80 inches tall by 36 inches I think that's a standard door and eliminate the grief of having to move these barn doors later and before I go any further, I should tell you, you should have this construction made as a two by six, not two by four. For me in the county where I am, that's critical. You can't get the depth of insulation inside these walls if they're two by four. The insulation requirements are on the walls is R19. In the floor, it's R30. In the ceiling, it's R38. Now that's my area. You should check that requirement out, especially if you want to go through the code rules and do everything legally. You want to check that out before you go ahead and order a custom shed. Now I understand a lot of sheds do not come with uh, some kind of a substantial roof venting system and I think that that's critical. So the shed here that I've got has the gables have vented and I'm gonna guess that it's probably 10 by 10 maybe 8 by 10 vents at both ends so you would have to close that area off on the ceiling so it will vent um, the length of your little shed making it ready for a tiny house so I didn't talk about this earlier but think about your floor insulation you can when you're designing the shed have them blow in that uh, I think it's closed cell insulation but it's really expensive so if you want to do that there's a couple of different ways you can raise your shed up high enough to get underneath of it and put the insulation in yourself or you can you can do the blown in insulation yourself as well I think they sell that at the big box companies the other thing I thought about doing was once it was in place, and by the way, code in my area says the floor has to be 18 inches away from the ground, 
which is really a tight space. It's doable, but it's a tight space to get under, so that's a bit challenging. The other thing I thought about, because one of the sheds that I have is probably two inches away from the ground. So I thought, well, I'll just cut the floor out, put plywood down there to prevent the insulation from dropping down onto the ground and protecting it from rodents, which I'll talk about. Rodents, you, you don't want them in your insulation. They will destroy it and forget about insulation at that point. But you want to, if you cut out the floor, uh, you'll have to put like a, I think they call it a T or something like that, something to stop the insulation falling down. Even if you use that uh, paper stuff and staple it in, you have to put something there and then plywood on top of that to seal it off from rodents. Now I have heard of some people using that foil that's bubble wrap and they don't like metal, rodents I mean, they don't like metal. So that's also an alternative, but it does require getting up underneath and stapling it in place, which can be a real challenge. Actually, I think the floor insulation was probably the biggest challenge of all in, in any of these sheds that I've worked on, shed to tiny house. So when I had this shed delivered, which I'll talk about delivery in a little bit, but when I had this shed delivered, the guy used this tool called a mule. It's this really cool machine that can raise up one end of the shed and shift it right to left, back, forward. It's really an incredible piece of equipment, and I suggest, you know, most of these places will deliver for free. Sometimes, depending on the height you want to go up with the shed, you, may, you might need to pay a little bit extra, which, you know, it's not too much, but it's worth it because, I mean, you can raise it on your own, get a floor jack and raise it on your own if you want. But the guy that I had do it went to the trouble of leveling everything dead level. He used shims under the cinder blocks. So it's all cinder blocks. And I think he did it maybe every six feet. Put, In other words, put a cinder block set to raise it up every six feet or so. I, I'm not positive about that, but it, it's secure and well balanced. And it, it's just worth the money and uh, the time and the trouble. Unless you don't mind crawling around on whatever surface you're working on underneath your shed. So you can see on this shed, I ordered a transom window because I wanted more light to come in. I didn't put any windows on one side because that was going to be backed up against a uh, wooded area and uh, actually just a hill. Mainly, it wasn't wooded so much as it was uh, just foliage, you know, short weeds and stuff like that growing up. I didn't need to see that. So both windows were on the front, and then I put a transom on the front to add additional light. Now, those windows were two by three, and they were double pane. So they're the kind of window you want. I mean, you, you could even buy triple pane, but whatever window you use, think about the heat-saving insulating properties of that window and just the general functionality can you open it to clean it can you um, you know if it's solid you can't do that so you know you want to have like a sash window that is accessible and easy to use so once I had electric hooked up to the shed which I ran well I actually hired an electrician to do that and um, that's a 200 amp which is overkill really for a small shed by the way this shed is 336 it's uh, 12 by 28 I believe 336 square feet so you know consider that how much heat do you need to heat a place that's this small uh, so think about that so also these windows that that's definitely something you have to consider in terms of insulation. So the shed came with, I think, two lights up top and maybe two outlets, which is nothing. So not for a tiny house. So I actually ran oh, probably eight additional electric boxes and I also ran a GFI uh, 
outside so I could have power outside of this tiny home. And that, I think, is suitable for a, a shed this size. I, I could have run something up higher, but I didn't feel a need because the shed did come with two electrical fittings outlets actually up top and that's what they plug the lights in or hook the lights up to. Additionally I had uh, water hooked up to this piece of land and I mean you got to consider the cost of all of this especially if you're buying raw land. Do you need a septic system? Can you hook up to sewer? Is your sewer on a flow system? If it's on a flow system you need to have your shed higher so you know your excrement flows down hill. Okay, so with that said, I didn't hook up sewer to this, but I did hook up water. And because the water line was buried, it was buried about, well, freeze line, about 24 inches, not that deep here where I am. You'll have to find out what your freeze frost line is. Sometimes it's four feet, so really check. If you're in Alaska, it's probably deeper than that, so you got to check that out. But uh, I use this special anti-break, anti-freeze piping. I don't remember the name of it. I got three-quarter inch. It's blue, but it's special stuff. Anybody know the name of it? Please put it in the comments below in case anyone else wants to share and, and learn from this video. Let them know. And I briefly talked earlier about the height of the walls. A lot of these uh, tiny houses are like they're tall they're like 10 foot high and you know that depends on the route the delivery person is taking what you're going to be able to fit into your well fit down the road actually and there are limitations I mean you see these bridges they say 13 point whatever 11.7 so you have to be very diligent about the road that they have to take to deliver the um, shed but in, a, in any event if you have higher ceilings you can put a loft above and you know a little space for little midgets and or storage what path what route are you taking or is the delivery person taking I had to have this delivery guy come and check out my area because it's uh, there's a lot of like one lane roads that he had to get down and some really intense switchbacks so the length not only the height but the length of your shed is irrelevant and in some case cases the uh, width so all of that stuff is relevant to your uh, the success of the delivery guy taking it down the road I don't know if I mentioned this earlier but I also had this entire underneath side clad with tin and it matches, kind of sort of, it's brown. But there's a J channel on top and on the bottom and then finished corners. And then a door that we left in the back to have access underneath the shed to either store things under there and get under there and fix things. Additionally, we dressed up the outside and put mulch around the bottom and some stones to make it more decorative and uh, tried to finish it off. We also included vents underneath so the uh, underneath would breathe and I also made these nice steps to to enter so it's a lot to consider when you want to take a shed and make it into a tiny home and if you want to do it legally or not now if you're living in the backwoods and nobody's gonna see anything you could probably do whatever the heck you want to but uh, if you're living in a community where people always have something to say people are always sticking their nose in where whatever anyway you need to you know consider all of these things and um, make the right decision before you go and spend you know thirty thousand dollars or whatever on a house and you can't get it down the road it doesn't meet inspection now you're now you're really behind the eight ball and you're gonna have a you're gonna have a problem so just consider it before you dive in. Think, of, think about all of it. I hope this video was informative. And if anybody has any ideas, comments, something I've missed, 
uh, please put it in the comments below so everybody can learn and grow from this process. I know a lot of people are interested in living more simply, and um, I, I think it's a great idea. So let, let us all know what you think. Thanks for watching and subscribing.